Okay, and I'm just continuing on with uh, strategies uh, for the king side uh, in the game of top of board. And the other thing is to, I keep saying it in all these videos, but you, you want to get the king off the throne early uh, and preferably close to the edge. Uh, you pretty much one of that half, you know, maybe the half open row here, one of the half open rows. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it doesn't have to be on the, you know, third or fourth move, you know, but if he's, if he's still there after, you know, several moves in the game, then his chances really decrease of, uh, getting to, uh, getting to the edge and escaping. Um, and then you also want to try and create, uh, open files and half open files. That's, I really go into that in extreme detail over here uh, on a couple of videos uh, in this series of Toblet, but you know this would be intentionally creating uh, an open file here that you can aim for. <clears throat> it's just kind of a gambit, and um, you want to try. You can, and when you play to the edge, because. There's, there's so many squares that he's attacking. You can attack two sides at once, usually a side that's adjoined by one corner. So, you know, it would be these two sides at once, these two sides at once, these two at once, these two at once. Um, because if, if there's any chess players out there, you know that that's a very important strategy for either side in chess. But in this case, um, it's the important strategy for the king side to have two fronts of attack. Because that's if you just have one front of attack, then Black just has to think about he's only presented with one problem at a time, and he has there's less options and you know choices uh, that he has to make, difficult choices, dilemmas that he has, he's faced with. So um, this video, there's two two really good examples um, in the series uh, of of doing that. Um, and then he also wants to kind of tempt Black with a lot of sacrifices. He kind of have to. He has to really think about sacrifices more more than the attackers because he's really got to kind of gain tempo. See, in all games of tops, the the pieces, these attackers, they're really kind of watching over the edge of the board, whether it's escape to the edge or escape to the corner. So they kind of really don't have to change their situation all that much. They're already kind of in a. They're already at the edge of the board. They're already there. Um, however, this these pieces have the really big challenge of getting. They he has to change the situation the most because he's right at the very center and he has to get <clears throat> farther away. So uh, he has th this. When you play this, you have to really make some sacrifices and try and get Black to lose tempo and to in order to gain momentum to the to the side. And the other thing is, um, it's best in when you play to the edge to sort of keep your pieces near the king and the king uh, near his pieces and not get them too, uh, you know, too. <clears throat> the king just kind of over way over by himself, away from all of his pieces. That's when you play to the edge. That's he needs. He has to have at least two other people with him. It could be like this and this. And once again, I go through this quite extensively in this other uh, video series. I keep referring to that I made. I don't want to keep making like 12 videos for each each one of these little variations, <clears throat> variants of the game. Um, so, and this, but the same thing for this. You see a lot of beginners make the mistake of always kind of, they'll make a move and then, you know, beginners always think about chess or checkers and they just want to attack, attack and capture pieces. So, you know, he's going to attack a piece and then you see people, they, beginners will just move the same piece around. And so when a, a more seasoned player of tops will play a beginner who plays like that, it's kind of an easy win because, uh, you know, the seasoned player will develop pieces around the board instead of having underdeveloped pieces. And then um, the last thing in my little review here is, um, you know, you want to try and force um, pawn isolations on the edge of the board and then um, attack him. Like in the end game video that I showed in this series, and um, there's sort of just one last thing I wanted to mention about uh, 
this game, and that is some people uh, interpret the the name of Tavelbord, which is the uh, Welsh word and, and Welsh pronunciation um, of this game, and they they interpret it as throw board, and um, they think that that means that dice were thrown, and that this game may have been played with dice. My own personal belief is that the the variant Alea Vangeli uh, was played with dice because Alea actually means chance. Um, but, uh, you know, I have tried playing the game with uh, dice. Um, and actually, uh, the gentleman that runs this website, he doesn't have this game as of this date. Uh, he doesn't have this game yet on his site. Um, but it is going to be coming here soon, he says. And he's going to have it with dice, so um, uh, it'll be the only game. You can play any of the top games with, with dice, really. And you can play with one or two and um, just get you know, your dice cup and uh, excuse me, roll, roll it. And when you have, um, you would just move any piece, the number, the number on the die. So you, you'd be able to move two. Also, on the rules... Uh, the guy who originally did the rules, he uh, didn't say which side moves first, but you can have um, either side in this game can can actually move first because it's not too distinct of an advantage, really, um, if at all. So, you know, he can move two spaces, and he's been two, or if he's going first, he can move two spaces. Um, you can also play with, with uh, two, two die, roll it, and then... You would add them together, four and three. You wouldn't move two, not like in backgammon or something where you would move two pieces. You would combine them, so that would be seven. So you could move up up to seven spaces, you know, if you had a piece way down here. And then he could move seven, you know. Uh, seven or less. You, you don't, you can, that's the highest number you can roll, you know. So if you roll a one, that's not good because you, you can only move one space. Um... Also, you keep the strategies the same. This doesn't change anything with the strategy. It just, it, it's basically meant to sort of, if there's one really good player and then one really bad player, um, you know, it's supposed to even it out a little bit, even though probably a good player would still win. But um, that's about it. So uh, then the next video I'm going to make is going to, I'm going to start getting into uh, playing Nefertop to the corner.